this week on The Startup Life. Oh yeah, well it doesn't matter how well prepared you are for for something, Mm -hmm. anytime that you get fired or let go, it is the ultimate slap to the face. For sure. And uh, and so it took a while for me to process. Hi Startup Mission, so let's take flight with AJ Wilcox, founder of b 2 Links. The Startup Life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. (laughs) Oh, this you crazy mother. Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We got a special guest in the building today. We got Mr. AJ Wilcox in the building. What's going on, boss? Hey, I'm doing great, Dominic. So awesome to be here. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. You ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation today? Oh, you know I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. So first things first, man, tell us your story or your path to entrepreneurship and tell us a little bit about b 2 linked Yeah, sure thing. So my story is I've been doing digital marketing for about the last 12 years sure. and really, really liked SEO back in the day. So you know, SEO, Google ads, uh, all of those were kind of my playground. And then about seven years ago, I took a job at a company, a, a local technology company in the state of Utah okay. and everything was going great. But on my very first day, I'm talking to my new boss, the CMO, and I lay out my plan for all of the different marketing channels. And she goes, okay, all that sounds great. Go ahead and execute. But uh, just so you know, we just started a pilot with LinkedIn ads. So see what you can do with it. Okay. And I saluted and said, yes, ma'am, absolutely. And then I walked out of her office and went, what have I gotten myself into? I've never even heard of LinkedIn ads. They must be terrible. <laughs> and, Got you. But I, I went and jumped into them because I, I didn't want to look stupid to my new boss. Got and you. About two weeks later, I had a, a coworker in sales come up to me and say, hey, AJ, everyone in sales is fighting over your leads. Whatever you're doing, it's working. Keep it up. And I logged into the CRM to see what he was talking about. And everything he was talking about was sourced from LinkedIn ads at the time. And I went, ooh, there's something here. So anyway, long story short, uh, about two and a half years later, I get walked to the the HR office and found out I was being let go. And that was where I was like, ooh, I've built up skills on this platform. I've run LinkedIn's largest uh, account worldwide. And now I need to go and share that with the world. So uh, that was kind of the beginning of my entrepreneurial experience. Got you, got you. So it was kind of a situation where they kind of put you in charge of LinkedIn a little bit at that at that company. He's kind of like, you know what? I'm just gonna roll with it. Yeah, I'm, no okay. one else on the planet has had this level of experience with LinkedIn ads. I appear to be the only one on the planet who cares about it this much, but it's working great for me. It must work great for for others as well. For sure, for sure. And as always, Startup Nation, the Startup Life Podcast is brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. Just want to get that in there. Gotta gotta pay those bills, AJ. If you don't mind me, man. <laughs> Pay away. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So, man, you know, I, I wanted to ask you this, man, because I, I've I've been doing a little research and I and I came across. I know you was on EO Fire a while back, and I, and I heard about you know the story. So I, I wanted you know to share that story with you know us here at Startup Nation because you talked about going to HR and kind of being let go. So you know, take me back to 2014, man. You know, you got that great marketing job. You're doing good. You're you're killing it with LinkedIn, right? And, you know, you get let go and you're trying to figure out what that next move is, right? And so you decided to take a hike, man. Tell me about that hike. What's going through your mind? Are you panicking? Are you calm? Share that story with Startup Nation a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter how well prepared you are for for something. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you get fired or let go, it is the ultimate slap to the face. For sure. And uh, and so it took a while for me to process. So, of course, I don't have to go to work the next the next morning or the next morning after that or the next morning after that. So I decided I'm going to do what I do best, which is do early morning hikes. And so I got up about 430 was in in the mountains, you know, before the sun came up. Got Uh, you. 
as I'm coming over this ridge, uh, I've got like a, a headlamp on and I can start to see things glowing around me. And I, I wonder what they are. So I kind of look up and I mm -hmm. just had walked into the middle of a herd of deer. I mean, it was just uh, this surreal moment where I just got lost and, uh, and got time just to think to myself and right. cover a lot of ground. And I kind of came to grips with the fact um, that, you know, okay, this happened. I can't do anything about it. Uh, now it's time to start thinking of what comes next. Got you. Okay. So let me, let me make sure I got this straight. So basically you, you, you went on a hike, went to the mountains, came down and got some clarity. Is that what I hear you just said? Yeah. I, I think anytime you go through something that, you know, I, I call this kind of a traumatic event, anything, uh -huh. you, anytime you go through something traumatic, you've got to spend some time with your thoughts and think. Right. And uh, and if you know me, I, I'm never left alone. I've, I've always got, you know, podcasts piping in my ear holes right. or a computer screen in front of me. And so it just, it took some time to, to decompress. And I did, I, I felt better. Um, of course, it takes a while to recover from news for like sure. that. For but sure. that sure. was the beginning of my journey to kind of grieving, I guess. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, man. I'm, no, I'm just messing with you, man. Sounds like a story <laughs> in the Bible I heard before. So I'm just, just kind of pulling your chain a little bit. So no, I, <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that. And that leads me to something I'm going to ask you about later on. But, but first things first, man. So it's 2014 and you start b to link right, in 2014, right? So entrepreneurship is something that's, you know, probably new to you. And so when you're thinking about something like that, we tend to make mistakes when we do something new, right? So, like, tell me about those early days at b to link man. What were some of those missteps you made in the early days and what did you learn from them? Well, I don't know if I would necessarily call this a mistake, okay. but it was, just, it was just the only way that I knew how to handle it, which okay. was, okay, I'm running this company. I have knowledge here. I probably could use help, but I, I don't want to pay anyone else to, to do mm. something that I could do. I so my it. entire first year was, I think I took a stint where I tried hiring some like $14 an hour interns to help me out, but right. it ultimately wasn't very helpful because once finals and midterms come up, interns disappear. Oh, yeah. um, so I think my biggest misstep would have been, you know, during that first year, I, I was working till two and 3 a.m. every day, you know, losing hair and gaining weight and mm. uh, not getting the help I needed, thinking that I could do it all myself. And gotcha. of course, as soon as I hired my first full-time guy, uh, three weeks later, I took my first vacation as a, as a business owner. And it was amazing to be able to step away from that computer for a full week. Okay, so like you're you're there in Salt Lake City, right? And so you know we had Chris Daly. I don't know if you know Chris Daly from Disruptive Advertising. We've had him on the show a few weeks back, right? And so he was telling us about the entrepreneurial echo space in Utah really booming. Give me your take on it, man. Yeah, so Chris is a great friend of mine, and I'm for sure his was actually one of the episodes I, I got to listen to. In okay, this, okay, so, yeah, great guy. Yeah, I really like the ecosystem we've got here. Uh -huh. um, it started out as as pretty tech heavy, which is awesome. Uh, right. It kind of earned the the title Silicon Slopes, which is uh, kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, lots of tech companies, and especially for me, really important. There's a lot of business to business here, so lots of you. companies that you you know you you've probably thought of of like uh, Workfront and Plural Site and Adobe and Domo. Right. Great right. companies to seed and get a lot of talent out here. For sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that because, like I said, I'm always fascinated about you know, how, you know, places are, you know, boom, because it seems like we're in like this etch, you know, entrepreneurial golden era, if you will, man, a lot of people are really kind of diving into the plunge of like being their own boss, starting their own company, or just following some type of idea. So I kind of will, you know, love to hear how, you know, how it's going on in different places in the country, man. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. And I really like Salt Lake because it's growing fast, but it's mm -hmm. not growing so fast that it's breaking things. Like gotcha. I, I was, I was visiting Austin a few months ago oh, and yeah. that's the, the city that just like so much is happening that the infrastructure can't keep up. That's and, true. And I really like that the fact that our freeways actually move. So um, <laughs> nothing against Austin. I just, I, I, I like being in a place that isn't growing quite that fast, but still pretty rapidly. For sure, for sure. I'm here in Memphis, and Memphis is kind of start that way, but to kind of give you an idea, Nashville is, is a lot like Austin right now, where the, it's moving so fast, where the infrastructure is, probably wasn't ready for that that growth so soon, right? Yep, unless you're you're starting a whole bunch of growth of people working from home so it doesn't add traffic, that's, that's all right. <laughs> that's true, very true, very true. So, you know, so when you talk about a lot of, you know, business to business out there, that, that kind of makes sense why, you know, you, you've really found your lane with LinkedIn, man. And so, uh, and that's one of the things I want to really talk to you about 
uh, bring you on the show because we have a lot of people in Startup Nation who are really trying to figure out LinkedIn, man. So before we get to that point, man, tell me, you know, because you're a certified LinkedIn marketing partner, man. Like, first of all, what does that even mean? And how do you get that certification? Well, this was interesting because for years, the LinkedIn internal team had reached out to me whenever they had like really complex problems they didn't know how to solve, which was very flattering for me. Um, And they had this program called the the Certified Marketing Partner Program that were all technology partners. These were uh, technology partners like like Adobe and Salesforce and HubSpot and AdStage who they plugged technologies in. And so because they had worked with me so closely for a few years, uh, a good friend over there said, Hey, what do you think about if we gave you the, this designation, you'd be the only agency on there. Uh, is there any value there? And I was like, absolutely. It would be. So, uh, you know, I like to be partnered with LinkedIn um, just because it's, you know, I think it's added credibility for what I offer. And I think right. it's a little bit of a kind of a nod to the quality that someone's going to get when they work with us, knowing that LinkedIn has kind of given, given us the thumbs up. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that for sure. Now, let me ask you this, man, because, you know, uh, I, uh, when, when we talk about like LinkedIn ads and stuff like that, man, those things can get kind of pricey, especially for small business owner, which is a large part of startup nation that listen to this show. Right. So, so let's say I'm a small, I'm, no, I'm a small business owner and, and I have a business to business B2B business model. Right. Should I even bother with LinkedIn? Because when you're talking about six to nine dollars a click, man, that that gets kind of pricey for a small business owner. So should I even bother with LinkedIn? And if I should bother with it, what strategy should I go with? All right, Dominic, you're absolutely right. The, these costs per click are pretty high compared mm-hmm. to other networks. Right. And you you said it. It's six to nine dollars per click is about what you can expect on LinkedIn. Right. Whereas if you're on Facebook, you might be paying one to two dollars a click. Right. So here's here's where it makes sense. You're going to be paying more upfront to get a click from LinkedIn, mm-hmm. but we know that click is higher quality. And of course, you as a business, you're going to have to ferret that out and make sure that that, that quality equates to sales on the back end. But this is the way I quantify it. It's you're going to be paying more up front. So what it means is you've got to have a bigger deal on the back end in order to make sure you have a return on your investment. I hear that. So I tell people, if you're going to earn $15,000 or more when you close a deal, then LinkedIn ads make sense near 100% of the time. If it's less than that, then maybe you better stick to Facebook and other channels. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. Because like, because like, you're right, man, because when you think about, you know, that's where most people are, right? You know, either Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever the case may be. And you're right. You know, that one's a little bit more affordable, but you but you do speak to an excellent point, Startup Nation. And I hope you caught that, you know, the quality of the ad that, you know, that you're going to get on LinkedIn is probably a little bit higher than you would get on Facebook or Google ads. So that investment might be worth it. So, you know, might be worth it. So be sure to check that out for sure. So AJ, I appreciate you sharing that for sure. Of course. And I can go a little bit deeper if you want. Sure. Um, Absolutely. Targeting differences. The reason why LinkedIn's quality is so much higher than, than Facebook and other channels is you know, on Facebook, they do give us some ability to target people by job title and company name. Mm-hmm. The big challenge is most people are not putting that into their profiles. I'm estimating somewhere between about 4 and 6% of people even put that information there. So if you're in business to business using Facebook, you've got to take just essentially 4% of, of your audience and try to get as much out of them. And then you're going to be targeting like interest targeting and lookalikes to try to get the rest. Whereas with LinkedIn, we can target people by job title, by seniority, by what department they're in, um, skills that they have on their their profile or groups that they're members of, company size, industry, and it just goes on and on. And they have that data on 100% of their their people on the platform because that was all the stuff that we put in on day one. Right. So you can be so much more specific about who you're going after. So in in all the cases that I deal with, yeah, LinkedIn is worth paying a higher price because every lead that comes in is gold versus Facebook where you're going to have a lot of tire kickers. I hear that. I hear that. You're absolutely right about the tire kickers, man. I appreciate you sharing that. So like when, when, when people, you know, come to you and they say like, AJ, man, I need help, brother. I need help. I need help on LinkedIn. And so you ask them like, hey, so what have you been doing on LinkedIn? What's the number one mistake you, you see people making on LinkedIn with, with LinkedIn ads? Well, I think number one has to be this offer uh, or, okay. or like what it is you're offering to people. Okay. So 
anytime that you talk about social advertising, I like to use the acronym AMO, okay. A-M-O, and it stands for your audience, your message, and your author. And those are the three things that every social campaign needs. So audience, the reason that people come to LinkedIn is for the audience targeting. So that's pretty much taken care of. Mm -hmm. Your message is really how the ad looks. So what ad format you choose, what image you use, and, and what ad copy you use. So that's not hard to figure out once you know kind of where you're sending traffic and what you're promoting. But oh, the offer, this is what it is that you're actually incentivizing someone to click with. I think the biggest challenge that, that I see from people is that they start out with just putting an ad out there that just says, here's what we do. Click here to talk to our high pressure sales rep. And, <laughs> gotcha. and of course, no one has any incentive to click that, right? Uh, right. So what we have to do to get clicks at a low cost and clicks that convert, we've got to offer them something of actual value. So call it a lead magnet or whatever, but things like webinars and free checklists and guides and cheat sheets, that kind of stuff is going to be an offer that will convert great on LinkedIn. Got you. And, you know, and I'm glad you pointed that out because, you know, a lot of people, you know, on social media, they just kind of have this notion. And, and, and this is very true, Startup Nation. You're just advertising, but you're not really offering some type of value. You're not really thinking about that acronym with them. What's in it for me? Because if you're just saying, hey, this is what we do. Talk to the high pressure sales rep, like AJ said, AJ said you're going to turn that, you know, your six to nine dollar click into a tire kicker. You know, and so you don't you don't necessarily want that. So I appreciate you sharing that, man, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. So, man, look, you know, one of the things you shared, because I, I, I actually checked out the, the Facebook live you did with Jessica Rhodes of Interview Connections, who I absolutely adore. I love She's you, Jessica. Amazing. She's amazing. Right. And, and so one of the things you shared, you know, I, I would love for you to share with, you know, Startup Nation as well was, you know, you shared like your, the ad copy and color strategy for LinkedIn, man. Can you share that with Startup Nation as well? Sure thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I've found is most people, when they're trying to write an ad, the image is everything that they're thinking of. They're, they're right. thinking like, what can I use here that's going to really make a big, uh, a big difference? And we've tested, I mean, we've spent over $110 million on the platform doing, you know, tens of thousands of tests. And what we've found is that the image is like the lowest impact part of the ad. So when we're doing an A-B test and all ad copy stays the same, but we're just changing an image, we generally see click-through rates and, and performance stay about the same. So what that tells us is the image doesn't play a big part. What the image's job is to do is to get your eyes to the ad copy, to, mm -hmm. to read just a little bit and see if it's something they're interested in. So by far the most important thing is like, just let it be eye-catching. So that means all the all the imagery on LinkedIn is all going to be in the blues, grays, and whites color palette. Right. So you just want something that contrasts against that. So try to include as much orange, red, purple, green as you can. And then the image has done its job. Now you got to work on ad copy. And the right. very first thing, like you know the acronym with them, the very first thing you want to do is like tell them, here's what you're going to get out of this. This right. is what you should be paying attention to or why you should pay attention. Right, right. Thank you for sharing that, man. Because I, I think that's really important, man. Like, you know, you can't just be a, I mean, look, we, we're all adults here. We know we're just, here, you know, we're here to sell you something. But unless you're offering that value startup nation, what AJ is saying is like, nobody's really going to kind of, you know, pay attention to. But I really appreciate that, that, that color scheme and ad copy strategy, because I think, you know, there, there's power in words, right? And there's power in, in images as well. So when you combine those two, man, I, I really think that's helpful and can help you stand out for sure. And it shows that people, it shows the people that you really put some thought and some effort into and you're not just slapping some on, uh, you know, to like, you know, get some sales or whatever the case may be. So I appreciate that. Yeah, nothing like having an ad that just has a stock photo in it that they, <laughs> that you, you know, just pulled from a gallery and tried to throw it out there. Right, for sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that, man. So, you know, look, man, you've managed hundreds of accounts with over $100 million in ad spend, right? You've worked with directly with some of LinkedIn's top 10 accounts. So I'm pretty sure from those companies that you worked with, they've dropped a few crumbs of success that you've picked up. Don't be stingy, man. Share with Startup Nation some of those crumbs. Oh, I think the one that I'm most proud of, and uh -huh. this isn't certainly easy for everyone to follow. Okay. Here's the concept is that if you say my target audience are marketing decision makers, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is someone who's in marketing, who has a, a job title that's at least manager and above. Gotcha. Um, so 
most people I think would go and create a single campaign that's just targeting job function of marketing and then seniorities, manager, director, VP, and C-level. And you could sure run an ad there and, and do just fine. But what we do instead is we will break up that audience into what we call micro segments. So mm. in this example, we'll have a separate campaign for just marketing managers, another for marketing directors, another for marketing VPs, and another for CMOs. And then what we're going to find out is if we run exactly the same, you know, a B test within each of these campaigns, we're right. going to find little pieces of flavor. We're going to find things like, Hey, CMOs, uh, convert at a high rate. So we're getting a low cost per conversion, but they're really insanely busy. So they're hard for the sales team to get on the phone. So their cost per qualified lead goes up mm. versus a marketing manager is a little bit more, uh, I guess, jaded. And so they don't convert as much, but they're easy to get on the phone. And so little differences like that, that you would have never known if it was just all lumped together in one campaign. And then you're just looking at the average of everyone's performance inside of that. When you see average performance, you don't know, like there's no lever for you to take action. Um, so anyway, that's one of the things we do. It creates a lot more campaigns in an account to manage, which means it takes more time to manage and, and a lot more skill. But boy, you know, we can find efficiencies in an account that no one else could. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, man, let me ask you something really quickly, because I know in 2016, LinkedIn was acquired by Microsoft, right? And so you're by this point, probably like two years in the game with Beat to Linked and Startup Nation, you can get all the great advice from his blog to his services on B2Link.com. And we have the link in the show notes for easy access. But when Microsoft acquired LinkedIn, man, was that a good move? Was that good for business? Was that bad for business? Did you see any changes to your business model? Did you rethink it? So like, how did that affect, you know, b to linked at all? So it was really funny. When I very first heard the news, I kind of scratched my head and went, wait, Microsoft? Like, okay. why, why not Google? Why not Salesforce? But, okay. um, but I, I've kind of come to terms with it and understood. And I, I don't know if you know very much about Bing ads, but it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the ad world. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like a, you know, it's a competitor to Google ads that people go, eh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of small potatoes. Gotcha. But I, I have gotten to watch the Bing ads team really do amazing things over the last several years. Okay. They went from no platform at all to near feature parity with Google, which is the world's best ad platform. Right. Uh, so knowing that they did that and went, ooh, you know, LinkedIn ads is always kind of behind. It's always moved a little bit slow as a platform. How cool would that be if they got to learn from the Bing ads team on how to iterate? And so that was the hope I had in the back of my mind during the acquisition. And gotcha. I haven't seen the Bing ads team get very involved. But what I have seen is since the acquisition, LinkedIn ads has uh, become a different platform a lot quicker. Okay. And I don't know whether that was like because Microsoft is influencing the roadmap or just because LinkedIn people are going, oh no, I've got a counterpart over in Microsoft who can tell if I'm not doing great work. And so it kind of put the spurs to them. But whatever it was, the ad platform's moving a lot faster now. And you know, we see six or seven new updates every quarter rather than one or two. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that, man. Last question before we go to break, man. So I believe all entrepreneurs are, you know, on a path of, you know, doing constant professional development, always learning and sharpening the saw, man. So what are you learning now? Are you reading books? Are you listening to podcasts? What kind of learning are you doing right now to do, get that professional development in for yourself? So I'm, I'm, crazy about podcasts i absolutely okay. just i always have a, a a queued up list and i'm always listening at like two and a half times speed so yeah, th that's where i'm just learning everything there is out there to learn um but then in my free kind of focus time right. uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to learn music I, I got uh i got a guitar for my birthday last last year and okay uh, and I have the game called Rocksmith for the computer that you, you plug a real guitar into the computer and, and play along to like songs, you know. So, okay. yeah, that's kind of my my uh, pursuit on the side. Gotcha. Gotcha. I actually was going to I'm actually going to ask you a little bit about that later, man. So <laughs> hold on to that thought for sure. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. How you like being on the startup life so far, man? Oh, it's a it's a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're getting great value from AJ's content, but we got to pay a few bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life Podcast, and it is powered by the Binge Podcast Network.
Hey business owner, the startup life reach is growing. Wouldn't you like your business to grow with it? Reach out to us to advertise on the startup life. You can reach us at 901-857-4818 or you can email me at dominic at askalsolutions.com. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like this is a great music to have break on, but wouldn't this break sound a lot better with the same music, but your business being advertised on it? Need more content from the Startup Life, you say? You can now sign up for the Startup Life All Access Pass on the Binge Podcast Network's Patreon page. There is exclusive content written by yours truly, video content where I share even more of my business philosophies, and whatever crazy content I can think of out of that crazy head of mine. And at only $5 a month, yeah, $5 a month, this is more content for you, Startup Nation, to really get ahead of your competition. So instead of upsizing that meal at your favorite fast food joint, you can now invest in yourself on your path to entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to sign up. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So AJ, man, so you know, when we go to b2link.com, man, you know, I, I went around a little bit. I saw that you offer a lot of you know cool services. You offer account management, which is what I want to ask you about now, right? So this is where a firm basically pays you kind of run their LinkedIn account, if you will, right? So what's the process that goes into not only getting them more leads, but also helping that firm continue to tell their story on LinkedIn, man? Yeah, so this is, of course, everything we provide is on the advertising side. For sure. There's a, a lot of really cool stuff you can do on LinkedIn from an organic perspective. Mm-hmm. We're just not the company to be able to help you out there. But if it's through advertising, uh, here's what we do. So we're going to give you a questionnaire at the beginning of the campaign. We're going to get the types of assets that you have, like the landing pages we can send traffic to. Okay. We want to get a feel for what's worked on other marketing channels that we can you know, borrow from that success for LinkedIn. We need to get access to uh, to you know, the LinkedIn ads account or create one if it doesn't exist and a few other things. Once we have that, then our goal is to take everything we've learned about what ads perform and what how to hyper target these audiences to get them really high quality leads. And right. th- yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, what we do. It's, it's pretty simple when you look at just the tasks in front of you, but you know, we spend $110 million trying to figure out and making all the mistakes so that we can do everything right on your account. Gotcha. Gotcha. I appreciate that. And once again, Startup Nation, you can check out that website, b2linked.com. And the link is there in the show notes for easy access. Now, no, AJ, I saw that, you know, uh, in the uh, in that Facebook live we talked about with Jessica, that you did offer a checklist and maybe Startup Nation can use that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I got asked quite a bit like, hey, I want to get into LinkedIn ads, but Mm -hmm. I can't afford you yet. Um, So what I wanted to give was a free resource that gave people a leg up and and let them uh, get started without having to pay an agency like us for some good initial help. So if you go to b2linked.com forward slash checklist, That is no joke. It's free. Uh, It's the same eight point checklist that our team uses when we onboard a new customer and and you can have it. Uh, It does ask for your email address, but if you don't tick the box that says, yes, I want someone from B2Link to contact me, you'll never hear from us ever again. This is purely a, we want to make sure that you've got the tools you need to have you know, real success. For sure. For sure. And once again, Startup Nation, that link is in the show notes to go directly to that page to sign up for that free checklist. Thank you for the free stuff, man. We always appreciate it in Startup Nation for sure. Freebies. I love freebies, <laughs> man. Love freebies. Appreciate that. So let me ask you this, man, because you also offer on-site workshops for, you know, firms and their teams, man. What kind of value, let's say if somebody from Startup Nation were to bring you on board, you know, to have one of those workshops, man, you know, what kind of value would Startup Nation be getting from those? Well, the nice thing is if you're in person, of course, we do these over like WebEx and Zoom and stuff gotcha, too, gotcha. But, but if you're in person, uh, you can be looking at the same thing on the computer and pointing to it and drawing stuff on, on a whiteboard. Um, it's just, there's so much more benefit you can get by being in person. But of course, the, the whole value in being taught is, is like teaching a man to fish versus fishing for them and handing the fish at the end for of the sure, day. For sure, for sure. So account management is kind of like, we're going to fish and hand you the, the most amount of fish for your dollar. But right. uh, if you know, for some companies that doesn't work and they want to build that competency internally, or maybe they don't spend enough that it justifies you know, having an agency like us manage it, then mm-hmm. maybe you, you pay me to manage or me to uh, train your team on how to manage it yourself and you save a few bucks and build the competency internally. 
I hear that. I appreciate you sharing that for sure, man. So look, man, one thing I you know in my research, I keep hearing about your amazing team at beat to link man. All I can hear about great customer service and not just great customer service, but very, very intuitive and very knowledgeable about everything that is LinkedIn, man. How did you assemble your team, man? Was it kind of like, you know, just kind of pieced together? Was it like the Avengers just all coming together? Tell us about the traits of a person that's a great fit for Beach Link. Oh, I, I love this because early on, uh, I had a mentor who who brought me into his company and okay. taught me digital marketing And when I was still a student. And so I, what I wanted to do was pay that forward. So mm. I'm not out there looking for who's the best at managing ads in the world and then let me teach them LinkedIn. I'm right. looking for someone who has the fire. They know they want to be in digital marketing. They know they want to make a career of it. And then right. I want to teach that person how to do what we do and do it really well. So the team team we have everyone's on fire they're excited about marketing and they're mm-hmm. excited about really making a, a dent on the world and anyone who's like on fire like that they can be taught anything so that's that's our team sure. and then we, we teach them to be really responsive uh to respond to emails as fast as possible um and you know just mm-hmm. over communicate i think it's really important for sure for sure do you have those like wolf of wall street meetings before every you know, every work day <laughs> to kind of get them hyped up to have them on fire well, we, we do have a, a stand-up meeting at the at the beginning, but I, I can't say I get too, uh, I mean, cocaine's not involved for sure. <laughs> oh, gotcha. For sure. For sure. <laughs> gotcha, man. I appreciate you sharing that, AJ, for sure. Well, let me ask you this really quickly. So who are your mentors? Because you mentioned the mentor had taught you, you know, paying it for stuff like that. Who are your mentors, man? Yeah. So this is kind of funny that my main mentor would be, would be my father because okay. he's, he's super conservative. He's worked in banking his whole career mm. and, and doesn't have a whole lot of ambition. He's just really happy to be behind the scenes and, and work away. But gotcha. man, he's been such a good influence on, on me and in a good level set when I've got a, a crazy idea, he's, he's pretty quick to tell me like, Hey, that sounds a little bit unrealistic. Uh, so <laughs> he's my sounding board for everything. But the mentor that I told you about, his name was Bruce Rowe. He okay. runs a, a, a marketing agency here in Utah called SIBO marketing. Okay. And, they're, they're not massive or anything, but th- this is the man who, uh, when I knew I wanted to get into marketing, but I didn't know what marketing was, he came into my, my one, of, you know, one of my classes as a guest lecturer and spoke about SEO. And as he was speaking, I was like, holy cow, this is what I've been looking for. This is marketing plus technology, and I'm a tech nerd. So gotcha. you know, he was the reason why I found out about digital marketing, and uh, I, I will always owe him a debt of gratitude. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. So with, with that being said, man, I actually want to shift focus just a little bit, man, because uh, in, in addition to, you know, your very vast, you know, LinkedIn knowledge, you know, and, and something that I, I, I knew for a fact that you could provide that value when it comes to LinkedIn for Startup Nation. One of the things I actually wanted to I actually, you know, have you on the show and talk about is about your faith. Because I, I, I see that it's something that is very important to you and, and you're, you know, and you don't mind talking about it. And that's something that, you know, I actually admire a whole lot. And, and so I guess what I'm asking, man, is like, tell me about your faith journey. Is this something that where you just kind of grew up as a kid and you just kind of held on to it? Is there something where like there was a moment um, where everything just kind of like clicked and, you know, and you, you know, and you embraced it even more. That's kind of why I had that lame joke from earlier, <laughs> you know, like Moses coming down from the mountain and stuff like that. So forgive me for that, by the way. Uh, but, uh, but no, man, tell me about your faith journey a little bit, man. I'm fascinated to hear about that. Sure thing. Well, I'm mm-hmm. a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. And many people may know that as the Mormons. Maybe you've heard of the Mormons. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so, uh, I grew up in the church, you know, both of my parents are, are members and, you know, we're a strong family and they, they taught me their values. Um, but there's, there's a, a really strong kind of prevalence in the church of, you know, yeah, sure. You can kind of coast on your parents' testimony for a while, but at some point you got to figure out for yourself. I hear and that. At, at the age of 19, I went and served as a missionary for the church. So I went and okay. lived in, in Ukraine for two years and spoke Russian and oh, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty wild. And, you know, to, to be out on your own in a, in a foreign country, speaking a language that you don't know, uh, you know, you've, you've really got to figure it out. And so I, I did, I, I figured out that I, I'm very deeply rooted in my faith mm-hmm. and, um, and it's a, a 
pretty big part of me. And you right. know, this really extended into my entrepreneurship journey because I, I okay. kind of told you that I was I was laid off from my my previous job. Yeah. Well, I went to my wife and both of us are really conservative and you know, we're big savers. And I told her, Hey, I've got this idea. I want to go and start a, an ad agency that just does LinkedIn ads. It's super niche. And I don't know if it's a big enough market to actually support our family. Mm-hmm. And she's like, huh, sounds like a good idea, but I'd still prefer that you went and got a, got a job. Right, so, right. <laughs> so I go and interview at a bunch of places and I got four job offers okay. and um, two of them were for way more money than I'd ever made. I mean, well into the six figures. And wow. I was just like, I had dollar signs appearing in my eyes. Um, my wife says that looks good. And, you know, because we're faithful people, I, I prayed about it and mm. I prayed about every opportunity and I, I got a very direct answer on all of them, which was like, nope, turn it down. Nope, turn it down. <laughs> nope, turn it down. <laughs> gotcha. and so after the fourth, I kind of went, all right, well, what about this idea I've had of like this niche ad agency? And, uh, and the answer I got was, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Pursue it. And so I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because I've always had respect for entrepreneurs. I loved going to entrepreneurship meetups and startup events because the energy, the fire was there and it always made me excited. But because I was so financially conservative, I could never imagine not taking a paycheck that was steady. Uh, But because I was kind of forced into it, oh man, I love this startup life. Gotcha. I hear that. And I appreciate that plug right there as well. I appreciate that for sure. <laughs> you know, I got you. <laughs> I, I got that. I got that for sure. So, you know, look, man, one of the things I also wanted to ask you, man, because, you know, since you're deeply rooting your faith, was there ever a time where, you know, in your business or any kind of professional setting to where you knew that, like, you know, you had to make a decision, right? And you knew morally what the right thing was, what the right thing to do was. But at the same time, you knew that it may hurt the business. Have you ever was was faced with a decision like that? And if so, man, tell us a story. Yeah. So I I definitely believe in in telling the truth. Right. And, and, you know, keeping others interests above your own. I hear that. As an ad agency, we make money when people stay with us. And I've worked for other ad agencies that I feel like are a little bit shady where they will Mm. tell the client whatever they need to hear to make sure that they stick around for another month. And we don't do that. One of our main policies is, you know, we don't sign long-term contracts for our, our, you know, most of our deals. Uh, We want it to be month to month because if it ever doesn't make sense for you to spend on LinkedIn, we don't want to keep sucking your dollars. And of course, for me as the business owner, yeah, if I can tell someone, oh, you, you got to stick around for like the rest of the quarter. Cause yeah, you know, that's what's in the contract. Of mm-hmm. course that's better for my wallet, but I don't right. feel like that's better for the businesses. And so I- I'm happy to sacrifice you know, something from my own wallet to what I feel like is make the world a better place or make businesses uh, more successful. Gotcha. I appreciate that. And that, that's kind of why I wanted to ask that question because a lot of times, you know, whether it be our faith or whether it be something else or just our moral code, I think those values really do play in the entrepreneurial mindset uh, and, and across many spectrums. So I wanted to kind of get your take on that, man. I appreciate you sharing that for sure. You no, know, in, in that same vein, man, I, I know that, you know, uh, you have a favorite charity, the Operation Underground Railroad, which is, you know, something that, you know, uh, try to uh, uh, combat, you know, what we have is, you know, human sex trafficking and stuff like that, man. So why did you get into that charity work, man? Why does that charity above any other ones, why does that one matter to you so much? Well, it's so crazy to me that slavery still exists. I mean, when right. we talk about it, like it was, it was this huge, like plague on, on our nation and our history. Mm-hmm. And, and it's obviously terrible, but slavery still exists and it's, and it's super perverse because it's sex slavery. Right. There are, there are kids that are taken, you know, at, you know, as even infants. Right. Uh, through, I mean, these are like, I've got kids that are, you know, three to nine years old. I just can't imagine people viewing them as sex objects for money. Right. So it's, it's depriving them of, of every basic right. And so I love that there's this organization called Operation Underground Railroad who, they, I mean, they're, they're covert ops. They, uh, they go into, uh, into rings where this is happening and they right. sting them and they bring in cops and they, they do it like the military. And right. it's super exciting to see them like freeing people, giving them their lives back. Gotcha. Gotcha. I appreciate you sharing that. And Startup Nation, if that's a cause that you feel passionate about, we have a link there for uh, in the show notes for easy access. You can also uh, give to that charity. It's a nonprofit. Uh, so if you want to give or kind of help out in that vein, uh, there's a link in the show notes for easy access, because that is something that is a massive issue. And it seems like it's it's getting worse from time to time. I know that's 
uh, here in Memphis, it's it's become a, a quite a bigger problem over the course of the past few years. So, man, I appreciate you sharing that for sure. Yeah, and because it's something that's it's a little bit faux pas, you don't really want to talk about sex right. slavery. Uh, right, right. People don't discuss it, and so people don't know it's happening. But if if uh, if we all kind of open our eyes and say, yes, this is happening, what can we do about it? Just the knowledge of it happening uh, is oftentimes enough for us to uh, to start that conversation and uh, get rid of it. For sure, for sure. And hopefully we did a little bit of advocacy here just now. So I appreciate you sharing that for sure. Yeah, thanks for shining a light. No worries, no worries. So let me ask you this, man, you know, uh, on a much lighter note. So a lot of times, man, when people have a company car, it's like a Lexus or an Audi, but I hear you got a go-kart. So, <laughs> like, tell me where that comes from. Are you like a Mario Kart fan? What's that all about, man? <laughs> I am a Mario Kart fan. Okay, for sure. so, all, right, um, all right, so he- here's the deal. Ever since okay. I was a little kid, I loved driving. And okay. I, had, I had neighbors who have things like, like a mini bike or a, a, a four-wheeler or something like that. And that was always exciting. But our family, we, we didn't ever have toys like that. Gotcha. Um, so as a kid, all I wanted to do was drive. And the closest I could get to driving, I think, was a go-kart before I turned 16. Mm-hmm. And our family, to earn money uh, for the kids, we would deliver phone books in the middle of the, the hot Arizona summer. Um, m- many of your listeners may not know what a phone book is, but we, we used to deliver those. And, right. uh, and we would do that all summer long to earn up enough money for something. Well, I earned up enough money uh, to go buy a go-kart at like the age of 14. And I was so excited. And I ran into the, the dealership at the end of the summer with cash. I was ready wow. to buy this thing that I had my eyes on. And uh, the, the guy at the dealership said, oh, uh, just last week that was discontinued due to safety concerns. It was like, you know, take it off the market. And so he oh. robbed me of my, my dream right. of the go-kart. So fast forward till about, I don't know, uh, five or six years ago. Um, I was looking in our local classifieds and someone was selling a race cart for like five or 600 bucks. And I mm-hmm. went, Oh, I, I'm a grown man. I have a car, but I can't turn this away. And so even though I'm, I'm, I have a car and I can get around that way. Uh, you may oftentimes see me flying around the, the streets of Utah. At, like I am a little go-kart that can go like, you know, 50 miles an hour. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that, man. And so you're, you're actually the executive editor of Daily Derby, right? Is that still like, you know, a publication there in Utah? Yeah. So it's, it's a car blog that, yeah. uh, that covers car news and I haven't gotten to write for it for quite a while, Okay, but, uh, but I, I'm a huge car fan. I mean, talking about Ferraris, Aston Martins, like that's my jam. And so gotcha. any, any chance I get to have conversation with people about cars, I take it. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you can actually, we have a link in the show notes for easy access for that website, for the Daily Derby. If you want to check out uh, that uh, blog and if you're a car enthusiast yourself. So we got the link in the show notes there for easy access. If you want to check that out. Sure, man. Thank you for sharing that. I I appreciate that. Absolutely. No worries. So, man, look, the startup life is based here in Memphis, man, which we will always claim rock and roll and blues is the home of. Right. And so I you know, and you mentioned the guitar earlier, and I actually, like I said, I was going to ask you about this because I actually, in that Facebook Live with Jessica, I saw guitars in the background. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I, I peeped that out. So, man, I, I want to know a little bit more about how your guitar lessons are playing, man. I, you know, you already kind of told me, you know, I mean, I want to know how your guitar lessons are going because I was going to ask, man, you Moonlight is like a guitar legend in Utah or something like that, but <laughs> yeah, you're still kind of learning. So tell me how those lessons are going, man. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, music just sings right to my soul. I don't know what it that. is, but like I love music, oh, yeah. and and I've always uh, I've always loved singing. I've loved piano. I've loved guitar. But if you've heard me sing, it's like you know, listening to cats fight. It's terrible. <laughs> I, I can't carry a tune, and I, I wish I could. So gotcha. because because I have this like need inside of my soul to express myself through music, mm-hmm. I try to take up instruments, and so I've I've learned drums. I've I've learned. Um, uh, piano. Uh, I got a guitar last year. I'm learning okay. bass right now. And so I, I play a whole bunch of instruments, absolutely mediocrely, but right. it's, it's enough to like keep me busy and, and uh, um, you know, let me channel that, that passion. I hear that. I hear that, man. Well, look, man, if you ever feel inspired to come down to Bill Street here in Memphis, man, let me know, man. I'll barbecues on me. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, man, I'm going to ask you probably the, the toughest question in the episode, man. How are the wife and kids? Uh, wife and kids are good. We've had a little bit of bout with sickness. Like, Oh, no. I've got, I've got four kids. Uh-huh. And 
uh, they're like little petri dishes. So uh, yeah, uh, that's true. one of them will get sick, then they'll pass it together, and then my wife will catch it. So we've been fighting illness over the last little while, but they're good, man. Thanks for asking. Oh, uh, no worries, no worries. I I know what you mean. My my youngest has just just got over the flu, so I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Oh, the worst. I understand that for sure. So look, AJ, man, I believe all entrepreneurs have a superpower. What's yours and why? I think my superpower is just unending thirst for knowledge. I hear that. Uh, something that really served me well is wh- whenever I take on something, I need to dig in and learn everything there is to know about it. And so when I got into digital marketing, there's this endless field of knowledge. If you ever feel like like you understand search engine optimization to the fullest extent, great. Right. Now you can learn advertising. You can learn social media. You can learn analytics. And so just because the field is so broad, uh, my mind just loves to explore and and uh and I, I guess get an understanding, a deep understanding of everything around me. And I love reading blogs, love listening to podcasts, anything I do can do to keep deepening that knowledge. Got you. Got you. Thank you for sharing that, man. I appreciate that for sure. So before we get into the last question, man, I just want to say thank you so much, AJ, for coming on the Startup Life powered by the Binge Podcast Network, man. I think you gave some great value Uh, that Startup Nation can really uh, sink its teeth into, especially with LinkedIn, man. I know a lot of people in Startup Nation are looking for that help, man. So I'm glad you were able to kind of come on the show and give them not only a ray of hope, but some tangible resources that they can use on their path to entrepreneurship. So, man, actually, this is the point where I give the microphone to you, man. You're going to talk to Startup Nation a little bit because there are many in Startup Nation who they're on the ropes. They're thinking about quitting uh, their company or whatever the case may be, or they 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 have an idea and they think it's a good idea. Well, they know it's a great idea, but they're afraid to kind of take that plunge, man. Give them some words of motivation today. Sounds good. Well, I, I've been in your shoes. I was on the ropes and scared too. And here's what I've kind of come to understand for me is that, you know, I've wanted to be an entrepreneur for so long, but just didn't think I had the guts to do it. Mm. And I, I, I went to go work for other companies. And while I was getting paid, I was also learning uh, and deepening skill sets and uh, actually developed a skill set that no one else in the world had or, or was deeper than anyone else that had. It. And so I feel like if you can get to a point where you have a skill set or uh, or you are the best in the world at something, you can monetize that. So don't be afraid of working for the man for the little, for a little while to uh, to figure out what that life's passion is or what that monetizable trait is. Um, of course, if you've got the passion to just jump out on your own and do it, that's fantastic. But if you're like me and you needed a little bit of, of a push, uh, don't be don't be ashamed to work for someone else. You're still an entrepreneur. I hear that. I hear that. So that's going to wrap up this session of the Startup Life. Did you enjoy being on the show, AJ? Oh, you know I did. (laughs) Awesome stuff. All right, Startup Nation. So here's my final take. Look, we've all tried to build our company and build our business on social media in a myriad of ways. But for those of us who are those B2B business to business type of businesses, LinkedIn is a great way to do that. And AJ gave us some very valuable content uh, to do that, especially when he talks about getting that copy uh, down right. The, the, those captions are very vital to getting the right customer that you're looking for that fits your business. Also, the color scheme piece was very important that he talked about as well, very, really contrasting from uh, LinkedIn's blue background and everything else. But honestly, Startup Nation, his path to entrepreneurship is truly inspired. Like when he talks about his faith and how he built the company and everything in between, is really something that we all can learn from. If you want to let us know what you think about the show, have an idea for a show topic, or like to advertise on our show, please send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is here in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as can be now be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or whatever your favorite platform to get your podcast on. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. Also, don't forget to sign up for the Startup Life All Access Pass to get exclusive content. This is exclusively on the Bench Podcast Network's Patreon page. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.
Hey, I bet you're here for some extra content, huh? Well, you know I got you. Take a listen. Everyone can help the next person, right? Everyone's got that in their heart. They just got to, you know, find it sometimes and uh, and open it up to the world. So I think that's it, man. I really enjoy that. And and I and I see the direct impact that I've been able to have on, you know, hundreds or thousands of people. And um, I feel like that's, that's the reason why I've been put on this earth. That Startup Nation is Kevin Buck, the real estate guru out of Florida. So Startup Nation, if you want to get that content as soon as it's uploaded, go ahead and subscribe to the Startup Life podcast right now on all of your major podcast platforms. So that way, when we get Kevin's episode up, it'll be right there waiting for you. So until then, Startup Nation, you got a company to grow. Let's go.